Tim here. Welcome to Budget Bronco. Today on the channel, we're going to be doing our first installation of uh, lighting. And let me show you what we're going to be working on. Um, I have uh, these last fit pod lights. And uh, most people would install these um, as a ditch light. And the Bronco is set up to make that really easy with that uh, connector right there that you can take out and easily mount these pods as a ditch light. But I'm going to be doing something different. I'm going to be mounting them on the modular front bumper. Uh, and I'm going to be installing them right in uh, this pocket here. Just to kind of give you a view from the back side. Uh, that's right where the lights will go. And I have seen some companies have been offering a bracket that you can install using these um, uh, bolts that uh, come on the modular bumper. Uh, but I'm going to be actually fabbing my own bracket that is going to utilize uh, these bolts, this bolt specifically, that ties the crash bar uh, to the frame. So there's a nice mounting point right there. Uh, I think it'll be a little bit different, a little bit better, and kind of put the light right where I want it to come off this bolt and bring the light forward a little bit right to fill this space in the modular bumper. So when we're all done, it'll look something like this. So that's what we're going to be working on today, and let's go. Before I show you the installation, let me show you the product that I'm going to be using here. Uh, I chose pod lights from LastFit. Uh, they come in two different varieties, a 18 watt less expensive version and a 30 watt, 36 watt uh, more expensive version. Basically look like the same thing. This is the uh, 18 watt. Uh, it looks like you can get them for about $130. I see these uh, and why I picked them as a middle of the road version between the kind of really inexpensive cheap ones that you can find on Amazon that probably don't last, probably rust, uh, aren't very leak proof. Um, uh, and, and there's definitely more expensive things out there like diode dynamics and some super high end products. I think these are kind of in the middle for quality and price. Uh, so for $130, you can get the 18 watt version. They come in uh, white and yellow. You can get them in flood, fog, spot driving. Um, this specifically is the product that I purchased, the 36 watt driving in white. Um, comes with a three-year warranty. Uh, one thing I'll note, oh, these are uh, aluminum housings and stainless steel brackets and hardware. I used a magnet to test that. Um, it did not have uh, magnetivity on the connection bracket or the hardware that you use to secure it to the pod, uh, which is pretty heavy-duty aluminum. Three-year warranty. Um, one thing here, it says the harness is not included. If you have the aux switches on your Bronco, you do not need to also purchase the harness, but you will need uh, about 10 feet of wire to connect from the pods. It does come with the pigtail bracket to attach to the pod. Uh, then you'll have bare wire coming out at the end of that that you can route to the aux switch, which I'll show you later. So if you have aux switches, you don't have to also purchase the harness. Um, just to kind of quick look at the different driving style beam patterns. Again, I went with the driving pattern just because it's kind of in between uh, the super narrow spot and the fog. Um, and then here are some other general specs on that 36 watt version. It's going to pull about all about three amps. Uh, so I'll have no problem wiring it to the aux switch with a 10 amp uh, circuit breaker on it. Um, and the rest of the specs associated with this product. Again, it does come with the pigtail mounts uh, and the brackets uh, for each of the pod lights. So, on to the installation. Here's what we're going to be fabbing the bracket out of. Uh, this is 1 8 inch thick uh, steel. That's a mounting uh, plate or bracket of some sort uh, that I got at Home Depot for like three bucks. Uh, basically what we need to do is shorten it up uh, so I'll be trimming the uh, ends up a bit. And then in order to get that uh, pod to sit at the right place, this needs to come down about a half inch. So I'm going to be bending this plate uh, to come down and then level out and come out probably about to right here or so in length. Um, and then uh, drill a one hole on one side for the bolt that goes into the crash bar. And then a smaller hole on the other side for mounting the uh, pod light. So that's what you'll see me do next.
here are the two finished brackets. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, you need a half inch hole on this side to accept the bolt that goes on the uh, crash bar. And then uh, this I think is a 5 16th size hole for the mounting point of the pod light. The only other thing you have to do if you're building a bracket like this, um, you can see that I've got about that half inch drop. You need to put a little twist in it because the crash bar is on a little bit of an angle like this. Uh, so you can see I've twisted this end uh, clockwise a little bit to compensate for that. So even with the crash bar being a little bit on an angle, the mounting point is completely parallel to the ground. And so that's a pretty simple bracket for mounting the pod lights. And uh, next thing I'll do is paint these and then I'll get them mounted up. Here is the bracket that I built, now painted. And then it's just a matter of assembling the pod light. Uh, I've attached the bracket that came with the pod light with the fasteners. And then this will just come together like this. Make sure I get this on right, this direction. Um, and I'm just going to hand tighten these things now just to get them on there so I can do final alignment of the light later. Um, put the lock washer on there and the stainless steel nut that came with all those fasteners came with the pod light. Just going to hand tighten it on here for now. I'll do a final alignment of everything once I get it out on uh, a road and can make sure that everything's pointing right where I want it. So this can now be installed on the truck. So we've got the uh, completed assembly and the uh, big heavy duty bolt that uh, is going to connect it to the crash bar. Uh, so I'll just thread the light from the back up through. And then I'm gonna just hand tighten this bolt down for starters get it all put together here. Okay, now I'll fasten it down with the ratchet just to get it nice and tight. And that is pretty much it. You can see that's going to handle, put it in there and send firmly. Let me show you what I've done for the wiring. So this is the passenger side. Uh, I've just gone straight up and here in the engine compartment uh, over on the very side there's a gap and you can just come straight up along the fender. I've come out and under the uh, air intake and then I'm just going to follow along some of this uh, plumbing that we have here it goes along the top of the radiator, uh, joining up with uh, this electrical cable uh, across the front. And here I'm meeting up with the driver's side pod light, which is also going to come up right along the fender uh, behind the headlight. So now I've got both of my pod light connections. Um, I've got them together, and then here I'm following along the uh, hood latch uh, disconnect uh, cable and uh, following along there. So we get back to where the aux switch connectors are. So what you want to do is, um, these are the pod lights, the two blacks uh, come together and splice them into a ground. There's a convenient ground point right here above, on the hood frame area. So two blacks into one connect to the ground and then from again the pod lights two reds connect into one and I'm using the green and brown connector which is aux 2. Uh, the reason I chose that one is that uh, it's rated for 15 amps I only need probably six or seven. The other ones are rated for 10, but the wires uh, are skinnier. I'm not sure what gauge it is, but um, so I went with the green and the brown because it's a thicker gauge wire than some of the other aux switches that are only on the 10 amp fuse 
Um, but I also didn't want to use the 30, which is the yellow. So this 15-amp uh, fused green-brown connector, uh, two into one. Uh, I'll tie all this up. I just want to show you the connection points, uh, and we'll be ready to go. Okay, we're out on a country road near my house, and I uh, thought it'd be good to do a little a comparison. This is the normal driving lights, and this is the pod lights. So big difference, that's the pod lights on, pod lights off, uh, gives you a lot of extra distance. And I also have them pointed a little bit uh, more to the left and right. Uh, there's a lot of deer around here, so I think it's nice to have a little bit off the road uh, so you can see deer coming out of the fields or uh, out of the brush, uh, give you a little bit of extra uh, visibility on uh, deer and things like that. So a big difference. Uh, I'm going to turn the brights on too. That's with the brights. No brights. So yeah, the brights add just a little bit, but um, I think these are pretty darn nice. Give you a lot of extra visibility. That's it for Budget Bronco today. Uh, appreciate you watching. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. I always read them and I try to reply to just about every single one of them. So I really appreciate all the feedback. Uh, also, let me know what else you'd like to see on the Budget Bronco. Uh, if you like my projects, hit the subscribe, hit that like. I really appreciate it, and we'll see you next time.